My dad joined the military and was sent to Iraq when he was 20. He was young, but had come from a military family and was expected to carry on the family tradition. He didn't talk about it much, other than feeling like he didn't have a choice, like his future had been decided for him long before. He said it wasn't a good feeling, but that lots of people found themselves going down career paths that weren't their first pick for reasons other than their own. My mom and dad had been dating for over a year when he was sent to Iraq. He did two tours, and my mom talks about how my dad was never the same after he came back. He was diagnosed with PTSD and had a very tough time blending back into his old life. My mom talked about his nightmares. He would wake up screaming and going on about being sorry for something. He had lost his best friend over there and a number of guys he had gotten to know. He came back feeling lonely and wondering why he had been allowed to live while so many others perished. My parents struggled like that for a while. My dad went to a support group, made an effort to talk to people about how he was feeling and jumped through all the hoops. Nothing seemed to help though. My dad had always been an outdoor person he was obsessed with those reality survival shows. You know, the ones where people get dropped off in the middle of nowhere with only a few tools and have to survive. He started going camping a lot by himself and always seemed more at peace when he came back. My mom said she started to realize how much nature seemed to heal my dad and that time spent outdoors seemed like the only thing that made him feel better. My dad said he felt the same thing that he only felt himself when he was off the grid, surrounded by nature and silence. He talked about how as soon as he'd gone back into city limits, the weight of everything started to come down on him again. He could feel the weight of everyone's expectations, the pressure to get better, to feel better, to feel normal. The more he tried, the more the pressure got to him and made him withdraw farther into himself. My mom said she knew something extreme was going to have to happen to help him. The real estate market was booming at the time. People were able to sell their small, modest homes for ridiculous sums of money. And my parents had started to talk about the possibility of selling their house, getting a great amount of money for it, then downsizing and buying a cabin somewhere. My dad asked my mom if she really felt she could be happy living like that. And she said she just wanted him to be happy so they could finally start the family they had always wanted to. She said her home was where he was and where he was happy. My dad still talks about how that was the moment he knew without a shadow of a doubt that my mom was the one for him. A month before they put the house up on the market, they snuck off quietly to City Hall and tied the knot. My mom felt optimistic that things were going to get better for them with the move. The house sold within two weeks of being up, and they got more than what they had hoped for. My mom was a little taken aback by how quickly the house sold, and the buyers wanted a quick possession of only a month, which meant a month to find a place and pack up all our things. My parents had a realtor friend who knew exactly what they were looking for. The more isolated the place, the better. My dad needed quiet and solitude. He needed my mom, shelter, food, clothes, and that was it. He wanted a simple life, and he felt that's what could bring him peace. The realtor found a number of off-the-grid properties that were a world away from the suburban neighborhood they had come from. They had looked at several properties, and while a few of them checked off a lot of the boxes of what they wanted, my dad didn't feel right about any of them. One sunny afternoon, all that changed. The realtor had phoned them super excited that a place had just gone up. It was a cabin two hours out of town, surrounded by trees, with a little stream, and the nearest neighbor was over 30 miles away. My dad said that as soon as they pulled up, he knew he was home. The realtor warned them that it was a little more rustic than what they first described. It had been an old hunting cabin, so it was very utilitarian. My mom was less than impressed, but said when she saw the look on my dad's face, she knew it was the place for them. He explained that there was no cell reception or internet out here, but that was exactly what they wanted. When my dad looked at my mom with hope in his eyes, she nodded, looked around, and said, yes, this is the place. 
This will be a great project for us to make this a home together. My dad picked her up and twirled her in his arms. They were moved in a month later, and my mom was nesting like crazy. She found out she was pregnant the week they moved in. My dad worked on adding a toilet in the cabin, and my mom was painting like crazy. It was a small cabin with an open floor plan, so there wasn't a whole lot to do on the inside. The plan was to never go into town, to live off the land. That's what my dad wanted, to live like on one of those survival shows. We had no TV, internet, phone, nothing. My mom cleared a section of land for a huge garden. We grew peas, carrots, potatoes, spinach, garlic, every herb you can think of. And we had a coop for chickens, a goat for milk, and there was a lake nearby that my dad fished in regularly. We had everything we needed. We grew what we wanted to eat, and the chickens and goats gave us everything else we needed. My dad seemed finally at peace, and my mom was happy with our isolated life. When I came along, it was quick, and without even thinking about it, my dad delivered me right there in the cabin. Afterwards, my mom had talked about going into town to the hospital to get us both checked out, but my dad convinced my mom that it wasn't necessary. People have been having babies like this since the dawn of time. It's perfectly safe. You're both fine. My mom had really embraced the whole isolated living thing, so she hesitantly agreed. My grandparents had died many years before, and neither of my parents had siblings, so it really was just us. We lived our days in the cabin, and when I was five, my mom decided to start homeschooling me. I loved learning about the rest of the world and was fascinated that not everyone lived like us. My mom said she thought about a different kind of life from time to time, but said she knew what was important. Her priority was to stand by my dad, she still didn't know what he had seen or done in Iraq, but she knew it had messed him up and that this place brought him peace that nowhere else could. My mom was a little concerned that with each passing year, my dad got more and more reclusive. She was starting to wonder if isolation was still the best thing for him. If she mentioned ever wanting to see or talk to another person or make the long drive to the nearest town, my dad would just shut down and start raving about why she would want to do that. My childhood was different from most, to be sure. I didn't have any friends, but had an active imagination that kept me more than entertained. I had my morning jobs, like sweeping out the chicken coop and tending to the garden and animals. I would walk the forest and look for herbs my mother used for medicines too. I became quite an herbalist and knew which plant was which and what each one could be used for. We lived like that for years. We still had our car, but it barely was started. My dad only used it for hauling lumber or something for building. He had stocked up on jerry cans of gas before we moved to the cabin, and they were piled up in a shed he had built the first year we moved there. The cabin itself was small and cozy. It was painted yellow on the inside and had a nice wraparound deck that you could watch the squirrels running up and down the trees from. When I was a teenager, I started to get more and more curious about the rest of the world. My mom answered every question I had and was very open about talking about it. Unlike my dad, who clammed up super tight whenever city life was even mentioned. I made it until I was 18, and then I wanted out. My mom had fully educated me, but I needed more. I wanted friends, boys, fashion, all of it. I broached the topic with my mom that I was interested in seeing the city, but she said my dad wouldn't like it at all. I said, I know dad won't like it, but it's not just his life anymore, is it? I wanted to go to college, and my mom knew it. She talked to my dad about letting me take the car to go into the city. It took days of convincing, but he finally relented. He didn't want to go himself or want my mom to go but he understood that I might want or need something different. My mom gave me a map, packed me some food, a big stack of money, and sent me off into the big bad world. I told her I would be back in two weeks. My mom had given me the number of an old friend of hers who she thought might be able to help. I phoned her when I got into town, which seemed like a very scary place to me, and she directed me to where she lived. I stayed with her while I applied to colleges and explored on my own. 
I kept my promise and returned home after two weeks. My mom's friend had gone with me to the local college, and I met with the administrator to explain my situation. She said that she understood and that she could base my entry on an essay, as I didn't have actual grades from a school to apply with. I wrote an essay on what it was like to live off the grid and how different I felt I was from other kids my own age. She read the paper out loud after and said she was very impressed. She granted me acceptance and even found me a scholarship so I wouldn't have to take out too big of a loan. I returned home in two weeks, as I had promised, but was a nervous wreck to tell my parents that I was moving to the big city when the next semester started. Even after I moved, my parents continued to live out the rest of their days in that cabin. In fact, they didn't see another person until 40 years after they had moved out there when I brought my husband out to meet them. To watch more animated story videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And tell us in the comments section what you thought about this story.